Well, thank you, Leto. Now, may I now ask uh, Professor Karthik Ramani from Purdue University to make his presentation in the shape of design? maintaining the uh, status quo in our, in our educational systems. And uh, in, in these types of uh, environments uh, and educational processes develop uh, in very, very structured ways. However, in the emerging scenario, a lot of our assumptions that we based our educational models are not valid anymore. A lot of the explicit knowledge is taught in courses in uh, fluid mechanics and structures and, uh, and, and many other uh, uh, contexts. That type of explicit knowledge has less and less value now. Whereas a lot of design has to be experienced and a lot of the implicit processes cannot be taught in online courses. You cannot videotape and put it on, on uh, online uh, uh, media and uh, have one listen to that and, and go through procedures to learn it. So in this form of an implicit, hands-on, experiential, and creative uh, process, it's a contact sport. Uh, it is not something that, uh, that can be imparted in traditional ways. It has to be learned and it cannot be taught. So this emergent uh, form of learning, uh, which we are calling the front end of design, design thinking, is, uh, uh, is more an explorative process. It's, uh, it's more contextualized in asking the right questions. But in order to experience it, as, as I was suggesting, my, uh, uh, and, and one of the things that I want, to, I want to propose is one of play and imagination. And, and uh, over the past 18 years, I have been um, uh, developing and uh, with changes in technology and so on, developed uh, an environment where students actually learn design thinking uh, using uh, both uh, existing uh, evolved technology, but also more focused towards creative processes, uh, sketching, uh, and uh, uh, understanding play, uh, and, and con uh, concept development, and so on. But uh, the, the emergent processes which we are seeing technology influence is, is a parallel process, and we decouple the two, primarily because computer-aided processes and other processes uh, do not uh, necessarily allow you to explore. You can uh, make a quick sketch, tear the paper and throw it without any training or learning. Uh, whereas if you, if you create uh, existing, uh, use traditional media like computers to create uh, designs, you don't explore. And so we decouple the two, yet have the students experience a creative process which uh, leads to imagination and, and uh, uh, invigorates them, in invigorates their thinking, invigorates uh, the way they, they think, and, and, uh, uh, and, and changes the way that uh, the design, design emerges. We have a series of workshops uh, that uh, uh, allow people to work in teams, uh, co-create, uh, converse, and, and they learn uh, existing forms of play. They take traditional toys and play with them. And then we, we contextualize it with changing play value. They change the play value and, and learn how to think about uh, and, and try to become uh, the young person that they were uh, in terms of creating, uh, creating uh, toys uh, that people can enjoy playing. Uh, and it also allows you to explore in uh, an iterative process which, uh, uh, which encompasses both uh, play but also hardware and software. Uh, and all these are, are uh, emergent forms of, uh, forms of design. Modern products have, have uh, and will continue to have more of uh, software uh, as well as hardware and electronics and sensors. But uh, in order to create these new kinds of designs, uh, one, has to, one has to have an uh, environment which is bounded but yet uh, explorative in terms of uh, being able to, uh, to create uh, new designs. So in terms of uh, uh, actually exploring this process, uh, we, we, we have developed a series of uh, sketching workshops. And part of 
the sketching work of, workshops are to prevent uh, engineers from fixating. They, we want engineers to explore uh, quickly and explore in teams and be able to, uh, to create things. Uh, so we, we teach them a uh, lot of the uh, studio-based thinking and industrial design thinking, but uh, uh, in, in, a, in a way that, that uh, engineers don't think that they are artists. You know, a lot of engineers are inhibited towards sketching. Uh, and, and they have been uh, too, uh, immersed in structured processes of education for too long. So we want to break that. So we have a lot of workshops to break their, their barriers to, to sketching and externalizing their thinking. And also, it makes their cognitive processes evolve in, in new and creative ways. You can combine, change, morph, uh, and, and work in teams to, to, um, uh, to, to explore a lot of, uh, lot of uh, different concepts. And in this emergent uh, design processes, uh, the, the uh, way in which teams work is, is, uh, is quite, uh, quite interesting. Um, here are some uh, examples of uh, various types of toys uh, students have created. Uh, w one of them here is, a, is an internet-based uh, toy. It actually lifts weight uh, based on stock prices. It, uh, it, it, you know, the person actually starts lifting weight when stock prices go up and so on. Uh, but also, uh, here is another one which, uh, which actually uh, was, was a very interesting design using very low-cost controllers, $15 and so on sensors, but basically it's, it's a, a graveyard consisting of, uh, of uh, uh, zombies and students actually created an iPhone uh, control toy which can, uh, um, which can shoot the zombies down and explore a very creative form of play um, during, during the, the semester. So here are some other uh, features uh, in terms of uh, the sketching and thinking that uh, allows people to externalize thought and motion and size and scale, uh, as well as a lot of the operations that uh, allow one to uh, think. A lot of uh, students have great difficulty in thinking from an empty slate. If you give them a blank sheet of paper and ask them to come up with concepts, it becomes very hard for them. So we wanted to break that uh, types of processes. But also, um, it ex uh, as, as I was suggesting, it allows one to explore uh, in, in, the, uh, in the workshops, uh, in the paddle stream, to more traditional hands-on uh, computer-based processes. They are exploring various, uh, various things. Uh, and, and in these series of workshops, create a lot of concepts and then reduce it and finally design and build uh, uh, fairly complex toys, uh, as, as I was uh, suggesting earlier. And uh, in, in doing so, um, we, we uh, come up with uh, very uh, interesting, uh, interesting toy scenarios. They go through a couple of cycles of prototyping, and this has changed over the years. And uh, with technologies such as 3D printing, we are able to explore uh, uh, very rapidly with very low-cost printers, and, and uh, some of the ones that have come out in the last one year cost uh, less than $200. And with 3D printing, one can create fairly complex uh, designs which are not bound by previous manufacturing processes. Complexity comes at zero cost now, and you don't have to design features for traditional manufacturing processes. And one can, uh, one can actually break a lot of uh, aspects in, in, in terms of uh, making things. And traditionally, manufacturing has constrained uh, a designer. But now, uh, certainly, we find that you can print very complex things, but design tools have not yet caught up to this. And in my opinion, this is one of the first times in history that uh, our ability to make things uh, via printing, for instance, has surpassed our ability to create uh, very interesting features. Um, some more examples. Uh, and, and in our courses, we want students to bring together some of the traditional disciplines of, of uh, engineering. but. Uh, put it together and synthesize them in, in creative ways. And I was uh, suggesting earlier how engineering has been taught in the past uh, is creating silos of knowledge. And not in a bad way. You need silos for specialization. But what we are faced with now is our ability to, to uh, cut across these silos and explore uh, designs in, in fairly creative ways. Uh, so it's not an either-or situation, but actually in merging the two disciplines, and as all of you know, as institutional leaders, it's very hard to bring the people that, uh, that have, have, uh, uh, have experienced uh, uh, educational models in, in this setting, and we ourselves have experienced it in this setting, to start working towards educating students in a very different uh, emergent uh, world. So with that, I would like to uh, uh, end. And uh, the key here is, uh, as I was suggesting, is to marry both the structure from traditional sciences and engineering to, together with more uh, playful and creative forms uh, in a new, new form, a uh, new culture of design learning, one that is more experiential, more collaborative, and focuses more on uh, reflection, abstraction, as well as uh, learning through doing and making. So thank you very much.